Hi YouTube, um, when I painted this beetle I took photos of it at various stages um, so what I'll do is I'll show you the various steps and I'll talk you through how to do it so you can do it yourself um, it does take quite a few hours this one, there's quite a lot of detail to it um, but I'll break it down into very manageable stages for you okay step one is very simple it's just to draw a cross like this um, just make sure that your um, vertical line is dead vertical and your horizontal line is dead horizontal um, just measure from the sides and the top to make sure uh, that it's even okay the next step is to just draw sort of half of your main parts of your beetle um, so you can see like one half of his jaw um, half of the head half of the thorax and half of the um, abdomen well the, the wing case over the top of the abdomen okay so not any legs yet just those parts okay the next stage is obvious it's just to draw what you've just drawn over the other side um, you could use um, calipers or a ruler you know to plot points to try and um, match it exactly um, or you could even trace normally I don't let my students trace things you know if they trace in my class they have to go on the naughty table but um, because you've drawn the first half you could always trace it flip it over and uh, draw it again on the other half okay you probably guessed where this is going um, so if you draw um, the legs and the antennae on one half uh, that will be it for this step um, I'm using a hard pencil to do this by the way so it's got a 2H lead um, it just is crisper then same again for the legs and the antennae on the other side okay then draw the patterning um, down one side of the body this way you can always trace the patterning and flip it over um, to the other side okay once you've drawn the patterning on the other side um, if you um, use your pencil to darken some of the edges now don't darken all of the outlines everywhere if you look closely at this you'll see um, I've darkened um, edges as if the light is kind of hitting it from above I've tried to darken the legs just on one side um, of the lines not both sides of the lines this can make quite a difference to the overall look in the end okay we're painting already um, so this is watercolour um, I've just used a wash of yellow ochre over the whole lot you could paint like each leg as you know one leg at a time each mandible uh, um, or you can try and apply it to the whole lot in one go but you basically cover everything okay so all of the um, darker areas that you're seeing here are raw sienna um, some areas are flat some areas you need to kind of blend a little bit so when you blend you just put dark into a corner or something like that or along an edge um, and then you dip your brush in your water and then you dry it on a bit of kitchen paper so it's basically dry and then you just pull the paint that you've just put on using your almost dry brush uh, in a direction and that causes it to soften and blend okay the next darkest color is just a mid brown so you could use burnt umber or mars brown something like that um, and again you can see there are some areas that are flat like the eyes um, and some areas where it's blended like in the legs where you're trying to leave like a sort of a light stripe in the middle of the legs to give it a bit of a highlight okay more burnt umber or mars brown patches on this that are just flat um, and then after you've done that you're mixing a sepia um, and if you mix your sepia really quite thick so lots of pigment hardly any water because this needs to be really dark so you put all the dark patterning on um, and then quite a lot of those dark patterns you can then go in and soften around the edge just by using a bit more of the burnt umber or mars brown around the edges okay at first glance this step might not look very different from the last step so you have to do a bit of a spot the difference um, what it is is mainly darkening the abdomen underneath the wing cases um, also sort of outlining the wing cases next to the abdomen um, and also putting some subtle washes in over the um, top parts of the wing case uh, and also using some sepia again really dark 
just into little corners like uh, in the feet and in the kind of legs. Okay, I always love this next stage. This is uh, using white acrylic um, to bring out the highlights. Um, the reason I use white acrylic instead of white watercolour is because it's more opaque. It shows up much stronger. So um, it's quite hard if you've never used acrylic before. It's hard to get used to because if you use it straight from the tube, it's too thick. When you try and paint with it, it, um, it goes very blobby and you get very frustrated with it. Um, if you add too much water to it, it goes too transparent and then your highlights don't show up enough and that can also be very frustrating. So it's just getting that balance right of how much water you need to add um, to make it work. Okay, you could go without this next stage, but I think it makes a world of difference. So this is just the um, drop shadow that goes underneath the beetle um, and makes it look like it's actually sat on a surface. Um, so I used a slightly purpley um, shadow, so I think it was a mix of violet and English red, which I really like using. Um, you could do a Payne's grey shadow instead, they work really well, or you could do a mix of um, you know, violet, uh, English red and Payne's grey, which might actually be what I've done on this. Um, but like, like I said, you're just trying to kind of do a drop shadow, which is kind of like taking the beetle and kind of mapping it downwards a little bit. So if you look at each leg, um, the shadow is just sort of below and underneath the leg, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, it does make a difference, I think. So if you can, put it on. And it's finished. Um, I hope you've enjoyed doing this one. Uh, I certainly did. Um, and I think it makes a really nice addition to the portfolio because it's it's a bit quirky and a bit different. Um, I know it takes quite a, a long time to do, but there's quite a lot of detail in it. And I think people appreciate that. And actually, when you're putting the finishing touches on it, you get quite a good sense of accomplishment from doing it. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, check out my other videos. I'm going to be doing quite a few step by step kind of tutorials. Um, there's a couple of videos that I've posted on YouTube of my portfolios with my kind of best work in, uh, so take a look at those. Um, hit subscribe as well, and then anything that I post up in the future, you'll get to see straight away. Thanks for watching.